What's going on, guys? Welcome to another Two Minute Tuesday. So I've made a video before that guides you on how to research, contact, and get in touch with agents, which I will link in the description, but that's all the technical stuff. In this video, I wanna give you a few big pieces of advice that I've learned from dealing with agents over the last five years of my professional career. Just for some background information, I've been in contact with 20 plus different agents throughout my career. I think I've had 10 to 15 different agents look for teams on my behalf, and I've personally signed with three different agents. Looking back at myself as a 22 year old just stepping into the pro game uh I, it's almost funny how much like how little i really knew so hopefully i can provide a lot of that knowledge to you guys so that you can be better off than i was so without further ado let's put the time on the screen and let's get started first things first unless you're looking for a collegiate scholarship never ever ever pay an agent an upfront fee. Any money that goes to your agent should be in the form of a percentage of any contract they get you, usually around three to 10% of your contract. So if your agent gets you a contract with a club making $10,000 a month, then 300 to $1,000 per month will be taken out of your contract and go directly to the agent. Nothing will physically come out of your pocket to the agent. Like I said before, the only exception to this rule is if you're a high school player or if you are a high school aged athlete abroad and you're looking to play collegiately in the US, then yes, you will have to pay an upfront fee for this agency in order to help you get a scholarship to play in a college somewhere in America. My second big tip for you guys is to always use your gut when you're talking to any agent. This person is somebody you're gonna be in contact with every single week, probably. You're entrusting your career, your livelihood, your future into some somebody else's hands. So you wanna have a really good feel for this person. At the very least, talk to them on the phone a few different times and ask them tons of questions. There really is no wrong questions that you can ask them. If you have questions about how many players they, they represent, if you have questions on where their connections really are located, you have questions about anything, ask away. Try to get a good impression of the, of the way they're responding to these questions and just really go with, the, with your gut. If something's rubbing you the wrong way or you're thinking, you know, this doesn't sound right, uh, then listen to it. I once was talking to an agent on the phone and just the stuff he was saying, the stuff he was promising me about getting in contact with first division teams in Spain and all this stuff, flights paid for and everything, it just, it sounded too good to be true. The way he was promising things and his outlook on my situation, it just didn't feel like, it felt like something was off. So I thanked him and I moved on to somebody else that I really felt like had realistic goals for me, attainable goals, and something that I really think would help out my career. So do your research, talk to a lot of different people, and uh, listen to your gut. That's like, that's like a, that's like a uh, motto of, of this channel of Become Elite is listen to your gut. But I can't explain how often that's true. Number three, and this is probably the biggest thing that I've learned when dealing with agents of any, of any type, uh, you really need to gauge their notoriety with how much time and attention they can provide to you. Let me explain. A big tip I have and something I think that you should always do with any agent is try to gauge how big they are. Not, not like that, but try to determine the level of players that they deal with. Ask questions like, how many players are you currently representing? Which countries, which leagues, which teams are those players currently playing for? How many players have they got in contracts over the last year? How many other right backs or your specific position do they represent? And at what level are those other right backs or your position playing at? Just from those questions, you should get a very accurate representation of the level of players that the agent deals with and therefore how big the agent is. And I know exactly what you're thinking right now, that the best thing to do is to go with the highest notoriety agent that wants to represent you. But that's a big mistake that I've personally made in the past. You personally need to compare their notoriety and their current player database with where you currently are in your career and the level of attention they can give you. Then you need to select the best agent that fits your specific needs. As you start to go higher and higher up the notoriety scale, that attention to you usually decreases and decreases and decreases. So do you wanna go with somebody that gives you a little bit better connections and more reputable, with more reputable teams, even though they might give you less attention? Or do you wanna go with somebody that gives you more personal attention, but maybe less connections and less notoriety amongst leagues and teams? Every agent in the world fits somewhere along this scatter graph with the general trend that the higher the notoriety, the less attention they can give. So let me go through the three agents that I've had and how they fit amongst this scatter plot. So I signed with my very first agent my very first year 
out of college when I was 22 years old. I was just stepping into the pro game and I was right in that middle ground where I was coming off a very good semi-professional and collegiate career with the San Jose Earthquakes U23s and UC Davis, but at the same time, I wasn't getting tons of professional contracts thrown in my face. I honestly was kind of like right in between. And during this time, I reached out through my web of connections that I had built from playing at this level and reached out to old teammates and reached out to old coaches to see if any they knew any agents. And I cold called and I cold emailed and through all this work, sending out countless, countless emails I really only had one agent really return my emails and calls and really seem interested in representing me. So since I didn't have much of a choice, I immediately signed with him. He was a first year agent and he only had two other professionals that he had signed and gotten contracts ever before in his life. And they were both playing over in Iceland. But because he was so small, he was willing to devote time and to help little 22 year old Matt Sheldon looking for his first pro contract. On the scatter plot, he would probably fall right here. And he was great, I don't want to demean him at all. He was outstanding. He returned every single phone call. He returned every single email. He constantly was working and updating me about what he was doing and the teams he was contacting, but he didn't have much notoriety. He got me one trial in Iceland with a second division team. Uh, I went over there. I didn't have the best trial. It was my first pro trial. I was nervous, but that's a story for a different time. And then I came back to the States without a contract. And I quickly found out that that was pretty much his only connection in the pro game. Even though he could give me all the time and attention in the world, his notoriety, his reputation, his connections just weren't up to par of what I needed at that point in my career. Fast forward a few years through connections of my own and hard work on my own and cold emailing and cold calling and everything, I had already obtained contracts over in Germany and had played two years in the USL and the States. And I was looking for my second agent, someone to really help me find a contract for 2018, right as I was coming off of my season with St. Louis in 2017. And I was looking for an agent that was completely opposite to my last agent that I had a few years before. I wanted an agent that could get me connections anywhere, that had the best reputation, the best highest level clients. I wanted someone that was the highest up on the notoriety scale that was still willing to represent me. So I reached out to an old teammate of mine who was the highest level professional player I could find. He had played at Saprissa in Costa Rica. He'd played at the NASL. He had good connections into the MLS. And I said, hey, can I talk to your agent? Since he respected me as a player and since I had been playing professionally for a few years already at that time, he gave me his agent's contact information and he put in a good word to that agent. Like I said, this guy was the exact opposite of my last agent. This guy had a bunch of players that he represented. And these players were playing top level in the MLS, the, the DP contracts. He had players playing over in very, very prestigious leagues over in Europe, as well as top leagues down in South America and Central America. And I honestly thought that I finally got my foot in the door with the right person who was gonna help me and get me a good USL contract, or at least put me in a very good league somewhere else. On the notoriety scale, he was pretty high. But like I said, I was just a small player coming from the USL, and he dealt with players that were making six, seven figures. So on that graph, on that scatter plot, he would fall right here with how much attention he could give me. And guess what? He really didn't give me that much attention. He really didn't work that hard for me. I would text him a quick question and I wouldn't get a response for a week, two weeks. Over the three or four months he was looking for teams for me, I think we talked on the phone once. I could tell he was barely working at all trying to find teams for me. He was really only gonna represent me if a contract for me fell into his lap. And I would see him or hear about how he would be flying across the country or across the world to literally have a cup of coffee with these big higher level players because those big higher level players were making him thousands and thousands of dollars per month. Even if he could find me a USL level contract, he knew he'd only be making a few hundred dollars from that from that contract per month. So I'm not blaming him, he wasn't a bad agent. To those higher tiered players, he was a great agent. But to me, it wasn't a good fit. His notoriety was just too high for where I was at in my career. And therefore, he couldn't devote the time and attention that I needed in order to get me the contract that I wanted. Now, flash forward a couple of years from then, uh, I'm with OPSM, as you guys probably know, Ottawa Pro Sports Management, and it's been the best experience I've had with any agency that I've ever dealt with. It's an agent and a group of people that I really get along with great. They're just small enough to really have the time to care about me as a, as a USL player, to return every call, text, question I have, to 
work for me, uh, but they're also big enough with enough connections through the USL, MLS, and abroad that I feel confident that they can help connect me to the teams where I can have uh, great opportunities to play. On that on that scatter graph, I would really say they'd fall around here. And this isn't an ad. Like this is an ad. I'm not saying go go be represented by OPSM. That's not what I'm saying at all. They honestly could be a terrible fit for where you are at in your career and what you're looking for. I'm just saying that for my specific situation and my specific point in my career, they're the best fit for me. And that you need to find the right agent on, with the right notoriety on that scatter graph that can also devote the right time and attention that you need for your career. So that's it for the video. I really wanted to give that little nugget of information, um, something that I would have loved to tell my 22 year old self right now if I could go back and tell him that, uh, but I can't do that. So I'm doing the next best thing. I'm telling you guys and hopefully one or two of you guys are gonna take this information and it's really gonna help your career. I'm not even gonna ask how I did on time because I'm 100% sure that this is a long two minute Tuesday, but I hope you guys get something out of it nonetheless. If you're liking this series as usual, please, please, please hit the like button and subscribe. It means the world to me, it means the world to the channel, it helps us grow everything. It's It just means a lot. It takes two seconds out of your day, so I really appreciate it. And, and yeah, I'll see you guys on the next video. All right, guys, peace. Yeah.